Hey everybody, this is Chris. Today I'm going to show you in detail how to fix a large crack in a table using bow ties and epoxy. Now this is my first time doing this, so I'll be going over the tools and the approaches, but most importantly I'll go over the mistakes I made so you don't. I'd appreciate your comments on how to do this project better so the whole community can benefit. Here we go. Now recall I picked up this amazing 5 inch thick piece of oak at a garage sale for only $40. It had been sitting in that garage for three years with virtually no cracks, so I assumed it was done cracking. However, after sitting on my screened in porch for a year, it cracked like an egg. The first step was to prepare the crack. I used my file and chisel to clean out all the loose bits. Next I removed the bark from the front so the epoxy tape had a flat surface to adhere to. The top surface had warped, so I had to use various files to make level the two sides. Finally I traced out and carved the excess facing wood so it matches the bark. I'm going to put the bark back on. The next step was to make the bow ties. I took an old piece of walnut and using various saws I made four bow ties. There's a slight taper to the bow tie from top to bottom, so the top is a bit larger than the bottom. This is to ensure you get a snug fit. The two larger bow ties were five inches long, three inches wide, an inch and a half wide in the middle, and a half inch thick. Two of them were four inches long and two and a half inches wide. It was about an inch wide in the middle and a half inch thick. I made two sizes because I was going to use the small one on the inside narrow part of the crack and the large one on the outside larger end. And do this on both sides to prevent any movement in the wood. I had a better idea though. The best part of the crack is the zigzaggy part at the end. So instead I took a small one and used this about halfway down the crack. Then I'm going to put a small one on the outside and then a large one on the bottom. This now keeps the zigzag surface exposed. The next step was to install the bow ties. The first thing I did was clamp it down so it wouldn't move when I marked the edges. I picked up these amazing deep jawed clamps at the flea market for 10 bucks each. They don't make them like this anymore. I use a sharp knife to mark the edges. Remember the bow tie is tapered, so what I'm marking is slightly smaller than the finished size. This gives me a little breathing room the first time I remove wood. I can still achieve a nice tight seam. I use my flat chisel to deeply carve out the edges. Now to clean out the bottom, I turn my chisel over to change the angle and get precise depth control. For those of you that use electrical power tools, now's the time to use a router.
With the bottom carved out, I start slowly shaving the sides till the bow tie fits snugly. I repeat this process around the hole until the bow tie fits snugly. I carve out the other two bow tie holes until I glue them in. I just want to make sure I'm doing it right before I lock anything in place. Now I'll glue in the first bow tie. I place a towel in the crack so all the glue doesn't leak out. I'm very generous on the amount that I use. I also rub it on the side of the hole in the bow tie. I want to see the glue ooze out all around it. Next I take some walnut shavings and rub them into the glue to cover up the seams. Finally, I repeat this on the other two bow ties. This crack is never going to move. The bow tie installation went pretty well. Where I struggled was with the epoxy. And so before we get into that part of the project, let me explain two rookie mistakes I made. First, the crack is very deep and inaccessible. And so I should have done several thin layers of epoxy, which would have helped get out the bubbles and the heat. Secondly, the set time in the epoxy was way too short. I should have used an epoxy with a set time of at least 30 minutes. And again, that would have helped with the heat and the bubbles. Now, one thing to point out is that the extra set of hands you see belonged to my wife. She was nice enough to help me, but she refused to participate in this part of the video. Here we go. As prepped for the epoxy, I cut out this cardboard template, which will be used to support the epoxy tape to ensure there's no leakage. The top of the table was completely warped so there's no way to get a perfectly flat surface. So we're going to tape the top and pour from the bottom. The tape we're using today is called SureTape HW300. Now there's many other types of tape you can use, and I'd love if people can use the comment sections to make those suggestions. To ensure the tape adheres to the surface, you can use a flat edge or a heat gun. Just make sure you don't get the heat gun too close to the tape or it'll burn a hole in it. You're trying to get 
one We're doing this in two pours, which again was the wrong thing to do. Regardless of the number of pours you do, you always want to mix the same amount of epoxy and colorant so the color matches between layers. It's important that there's good mixing between the two components, so be sure to mix for at least five minutes. Okay, that's two for now. Let's see what that looks like. When mixing the color in, make sure you stir for at least one minute and up to two minutes if necessary. You can use a heat gun to get rid of the bubbles, or you can use a flame from a small torch. In this case, we're trying to get rid of as many bubbles as we can before the start of the pour. Now we're using a heat gun to flash off the bubbles as they rise to the top. You want to use a side to side motion and not heat up any specific area too much or it'll start to burn and smoke. This is where the problem was starting. The epoxy is starting to set before all the bubbles come out. We waited 24 hours, then we did the next pour. We want to ensure there's good adhesion between the layers, so we're taking some sandpaper and roughing up the surface, and then wiping off the dust. Because the exposed epoxy was on the bottom of the table, we weren't too concerned about filling up perfectly to the top. Again, the epoxy is setting before the bubbles get a chance to come out. <laughs> That'll get rid of them. After waiting another 24 hours, we can now remove the tape. When we took off the tape, it looked like a train wreck. There was cracks, there was bubble holes, and more cracks. It was pretty obvious that the epoxy leaked through the tape onto the wood. I should have clamped the board on top of the cardboard template to make sure there'd be no leaking. I tried in vain to use a paint scraper to pop it off, so I had to use my chisel and just carve it all out. Then I took five grits of sandpaper from 60 down to 1,000, and slowly sanded and cleaned, and sanded and cleaned, until I reached the base epoxy. Finally, we mixed up a batch of clear epoxy and used it for two reasons. First, to fill in the cracks and the bubbles. And secondly, to bring out the shine and color of the blue epoxy. Now, just one note here. That side section looks so beautiful, 
I decided not to put the bark back on. I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe to me on YouTube and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chop with Chris so you don't miss out on any of my future projects. Thank you.